So, you know what, lately I've been getting into playing with a whole bunch of, I don't know, classic toys. I'm talking like Rubik's Cube and I got a yo-yo on a whim, which turned out to be like a lot of fun and got me thinking that, I mean, plastic is fine, but what would it be like to have a yo-yo in wood, right? I started making yo-yos and one yo-yo kind of turned into a whole bunch of yo-yos. I was trying to figure out what's worthwhile, what can you expect? So that's what this video is going to be about. Let's make some yo-yos. To start out with, I mean, this is what I have. So let's use this as a guide. So basically this just comes apart. On a screw here we have like a, a plastic kind of washer and a metal washer and then the string that goes around. I mean this one also has some some screws and batteries because there's LED lights in here but that's kind of beside the point. So this one is exactly half inch thick 2.2 inches wide. Now I figured you know I have a CNC machine I'm just gonna kind of plug in these numbers cut out some rounds. This was the first one. This um, is made in maple. So my first thought after making this yo-yo, so basically just gluing in the dowel, um, sanding it, um, and attaching the string, was just like, whoa, um, it works really good. The, I mean, the thing is that you have to make sure you put the string on bright, so it's nice and tight. You have to get a good knot going on your finger. Um, but like, fundamentally, um, it works great. Not really sure how to improve upon it. Of course you have the aesthetics of the yo-yo, whether or not you want to have a design, whether or not you want to have a different wood, whether you want to have a stain, and then you have the function of it. So whether, um, is it a good size? Is it a good type of wood? Um, does it need to be altered in any other way? So I was kind of the path from there, but to start off with, very basic, works great. I do like the, uh, the concept of the wooden yo-yo. Like there's something about an object that you touch all the time, that you interact with, and it's nice that, I don't know, nothing beats wood, right? The design of this, I mean, it's kind of what you see right here. Um, two discs, identical, hole drilled in the middle and a dowel throw, and then glued together. This right here, is one of these kind of trick yo-yos. After getting into yo-yos, I was like, okay, what else is there in the yo-yo world? Well, you know, you have these. Um, and these have more of this butterfly design um, and they have ball bearings inside. They kind of have a different feel to them. You have more control. So I was thinking, what would happen if we put a bearing inside this one? So we could redesign this one a little bit, change the size of the dowel, um, and added, added bearings. Okay, so previously we just made a hole and used whatever size dowel we had around to connect the two rounds. Now, if you want to use a ball bearing, we'll have to use a smaller dowel that can fit inside the ball bearing, so just a slight difference. The ball bearing will ride on the dowel in between the two discs. That's how it'll connect. Now the tricky part is turning the wood around and it needs to be in the exact same positions. Then by flipping it around we can get a design on the other side but in order to do that we also need to change the bit again. I'm going to use an engraving bit. This bracket here we put it in on initially when putting this down and now it will just determine the position of the wood again. So you flip it around and then line it up against the bracket. It's nice when you are not cutting on the whole piece so you can screw pieces in so you don't have to concern yourself with clamps or anything. If you're securing the material with screws you can go faster and be more aggressive with your cut. Obviously in order for this to work the circle that you cut must be right in the center of the wood because if it's off a little bit then when you flip it around, it's not going to be the same. That means that the distance between this and this needs to be identical or as, as close as possible and this and this. And that's the thing about CNC work. It's very precise and it's very fast, but in order for that to actually happen that way, you need to set everything up right in the first place. And nothing can be just slightly off or else it won't 
You won't be as precise. You won't get the result you're looking for. So at this point, they're quite sharp. So you want to smooth in the sides out. Fastest and most reliable router. Now the thing about it, a yo-yo is all about symmetry, right? In order for it to move correctly, in order for it for not like to spin weird, it has to be smooth and, and even and equal and you want that hole right in the middle. I had one of these when I was a kid and I remember taking it to school and really liking it. But then, you know, forget about things like this. Grow too old for yo-yos. But is there such a thing as too old for a yo-yo? I'm starting to think this is like the ideal companion thing to constantly keep in your pocket. Every time you get a little restless, you want to move around, you take it out. I'm loving it. I'm having so much fun. I'm walking all around with it. You want to glue the bearing. Or I guess it doesn't matter. So this is the, um, the ball bearing yo-yo. And I must say it's kind of disappointing actually. I don't notice any major difference. If anything, it is almost more unbalanced. Maybe because of the way it's... <laughs> maybe because of the way it's connected to the string goes, or I don't know. After putting the ball bearings in the yo-yo, I realized that not a good idea. I don't know, I just don't really like it and I don't think it is necessary for what I am trying to accomplish. So I kind of went back to this basic design. Now, I was wondering, okay, got oak here. It's relatively light. It is very similar in weight to the plastic one, a little bit lighter, I would say. But I was thinking, okay, I have this piece of tropical wood that I've been saving. This here, though, is a much denser, harder wood. Thinking that it would be kind of cool to uh, increase the, uh, the weight here. So a slip knot. Okay, you have your piece of string. You put this one under this one, like this. Okay, you form a loop. You put this under here. Okay, and now you can tighten it with this one if you want. You can make it smaller. Okay. One more knot. Now the key is you need to get it. This is the tropical wood one. Uh, did a design on one side and a flat side on the other. This one has such a different feel. It has like, you know how some woods have more of a kind of like a lot of silica in it? Almost feels not plasticky or like almost like a rock. It feels like a rock. I rather like it. It is quite heavy. Heavy to the point that once I've used it for maybe 20 minutes or so, my, my finger is starting to like, like, bother me a little bit like it is like the weight is substantial now the problem with tropical woods like this is that there can be a lot of chipping and imperfections and like the wood can it's hard hard to work with um, difficult to work with but on the other hand it also has this kind of feel almost like the silica in the wood makes it feel like plasticky but uh, let's do some let's do a weight test these are all pretty much the same size Two. Over two inches. 56, 66, 46, 77. So we have lightest, heavier, heavier, heaviest at this point. So this wood is actually heavier than the metal. Of course there are the design and the wood and all of that is one thing. And then of course there are various ways to accomplish that same goal, right? What's the goal? The goal is to make two perfectly round circles. How much does perfection really matter? So, try the CNC. CNC produces very precise circles, right? What if we want to do it by hand? Well, let's use the bandsaw. Um, I have a dowel here. This is a 3 8 inch, so I'm going to drill a hole in each before cutting out the circle, because it's always easier, right? I 
instead of routing the sides, I'm just going to kind of sand the sides to take off any hard edges. I would say about as, <laughs> as round as this is going to get. Let's do some pine oil. Um, I think it's actually a lot easier to sand these when they're put together. You get to, you know, it's faster, except when you can't sand the inside here, of course. Now, when it comes to finishing the yo-yos, um, this is the situation where I think wax polish is really the best. And I'm saying that from a tactile point of view and the fact that I don't want like a super slippery yo-yo. I think that's part of the charm with the wood that you actually want it to feel like wood, right? You don't want it like to feel like plastic, like a polyurethane shiny surface. At least I don't. The slightly less than perfect round yo-yo. I kind of had the impression initially that it would matter dramatically that it wasn't perfectly round. Like, it wouldn't spin as well. Not the case, it spins just fine. Even though, I mean, there are slight imperfections. I mean, you can see. It's relatively round. I almost think that the bigger difference here is that I didn't round the corners with a router. So the edges are a little bit sharper. It's a little more squarish. The other thing I've come to appreciate, when I was first starting this, I was like, ooh, blank. Slate. This is great to put some sort of design on, some sort of engraving or whatever. Um, and that's what I was first thinking about when designing this for the CNC, so that you could flip it around, because then you needed it to be directly centered, so that everything would be in place. Uh, but after like using these more and more, I've come to appreciate the smoothness of like no design, <laughs> just the wood. The other thing that I think is kind of fun about a yo-yo is that it makes a great gift and not just for kids. I think everybody, like adults too, everybody secretly wants toys. <laughs> well, maybe not everybody, um, but lots of people secretly want toys. And this is a great toy because it's great for both adults or maybe some adults, <laughs> maybe not all adults. The other thing I'd like to try is the tropical wood. I'd like to make it a little bit smaller um, and see what the difference would be. So let's do another cut. Decrease the diameter just a touch. So now the idea is to round this over a little bit more aggressively on both sides. Look at this. So let's glue it in. So, I think that the, the size and the feel and the roundness of this one is great and the fact that it is a little heavier because of the tropical wood is also nice, but it's not as heavy as the other one. So 58 is 76, maple 43, 48, when I bought this guy it came with this cord right here and it also came with a couple of extra cords and here is one of those so this um, doesn't feel that slippery I bet it's like a cotton polyester blend something like this here we have the mason line that I uh, picked up and this is very slippery and I bet this is 100% polyester and then I was playing with this like baker's twine which is cotton not super strong and thinner Although I do kind of like the amount of control you get with the thinner. It's having issues with this. Um, it's being so slippery the knot wouldn't stay in place. And then another. Yeah, this is a superior string, I would say. String makes a big difference. I realized one thing, that one of the reasons why I really like this particular one is that it really fits in my hand well. So other people might have, you know, different size hands, but this one is really great for my hand. 
I like the, the outside is really what you feel in your hand, but the inside affects the way it spins. I would say I had the most control with this one by far. I don't even really want to play with the other ones anymore. I feel like making a couple more. Um, this particular size in different woods. Um, and also making slightly larger ones, more round over at this point. This was the one I made and I think one of the problems with this one in terms of balance is that the string doesn't have a whole lot of movement on the inside because it's not um, rounded. Like if you compare it to this one, I mean this one has an incredible amount of, of area here where you can move and not get caught. This one, I mean it's plastic though, so it's very smooth. Then we have like these guys, more rounded. Then we have this guy. Okay, so this is the same design, just a little bit smaller, but also uh, rounded more aggressively. And you can really see that. So this, to me, feels balanced. This doesn't feel quite as balanced. These all kind of spin in different ways. Yo-yo numero uno. It feels, you know, very easy to do. The wooden ones are definitely a little more like challenging. This is kind of the tricks one when you're gonna put it on your finger. Okay, so you have a loop here and you put the uh, this, make another little loop and that way you get it tight. But when I'm using it, I'm struck by the coldness of the metal, the shape of it doesn't feel like that. Now it's like you don't wanna walk around and just kind of, I don't know. This one's, it's, even when it gets off balance, it's easier to kind of get it back on track. The wood ones, once it gets off balance, it's definitely harder to get back. Obviously this is not a how to yo-yo video. <laughs> I suppose what I have um, come to the conclusion of is that uh, it doesn't really matter how you do it. Um, even cutting one on the bandsaw where it's not perfect is absolutely fine. Um, a more aggressive roundover seems to be nicer, it doesn't get caught as, as much. Um, the wood matters as well. I mean, oak is nice, this one is substantially heavier. Of course, there's a range there, right? I kind of think that if you're looking for a present for someone, whether it's a kid going to a birthday party or it's your dad, <laughs> who likes fidgeting things. I mean, this is a great gift, right? How can you go wrong with this? And of course, um, since you have a blank slate here, you could engrave something. You could also uh, play with making a pattern with, you know, chisels. Although personally, I like the smoothness of it. I don't really want anything on there. And you also get a chance to try out different woods. And anyway, um, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're doing well. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Maple.